The Electrical Safety Foundation estimates there are 51,000 electrical fires in homes each year. News 3's Wayland Walls Parker shows us how first responders are staying up to date with their electrical training. It will lock you up. And that's the power. Jonathan Horrell is a firefighter with West Frankfurt and says they get more calls dealing with electricity than you would think. Yeah, during the storms, you just never know. There's been trees on top of houses and the line's been on it. He says they have to be extra cautious when dealing with power lines. In the recent past, we've had a lot of wrecks that have been into power poles. And Coral and other emergency responders are getting a refresher course on how to deal with electricity. We've had some informal training uh, from them, but this is the first time we've had formal training. West Frankfurt's fire chief, Derek Salies, says during the last big storm, they had 65 calls in less than an hour, and some of them deal with electricity. We've got to know whether or not it's safe to approach, and this is going to give us the education to do that. And as part of the training, Amron Cruz gave an example of just how powerful electricity can be. This Amron, Illinois presenter is showing first responders what happens when animals mess with electrical cords. But it's a cautionary tale. It, I think sometimes people just take for granted how serious and how dangerous it can be. So this is just a reminder to everyone about how we have to be safe around it. Jennifer Lee with Amron says they also go around to schools to make sure kids learn safety tips, especially as they start driving. Whatever you do, it's just important to know the basics of electricity. And uh, this is just an instance where professionals are wanting to know more and to further their skills and just make sure that they're safe and those that they're rescuing are safe. Coral says, besides learning how to deal with electricity, he hopes the training will help them be more aware. In West Frankfurt, Waylon Walsh-Perker, News 3.